Besides behind unproblematic nature of capybaras, from the casual geographic, we gotta watch the capybaras. I freaking love capybaras. Uh, they are the precious thing I have ever seen. So extremely precious. I love them. I guess I'm watching this bald. It's very nice. Hold on, I made this joke already. How you doing? Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better week. I hope your month is full of successful days. Look at that! I hope you just come up, brother. You smell great. You smell great. <gasps> you know what the best thing is, guys? The best thing ever is baby copy bars. Look at how tiny and cute their snout is. You just want to boop it. I did something special with my hair today. Oh, the capybara. One of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster. Almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or performative activists on TikTok. Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic, almost too much for their own good. The thing is, they have no reason to be like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. But first, let's talk about what this aquatic stress ball is. It's a rodent and pretty much oh. a plus size guinea pig since that's their- yeah, that's what I thought. I thought they were like guinea pigs or rats kind of creatures. Closest relative, even though they're like 60 times heavier. Uh -huh. Also, guinea pigs are <gasps> one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim, which is oh. something cappies know nothing about since half their personality stays in the water with them. Just like their cousins, the Nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of. And the Pacarana, who's probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a banned Old Spice ad. Oh. But out of all rodents, capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. They're just like humongous little guinea pigs. I had a pet guinea pig. I know some of you guys know the story already, but I had a pet guinea pig. I don't remember my guinea pig name, but we had three guinea pigs. We got, because I have two brothers, an older one and a younger brother. And so we got three guinea pigs. We had one that was very hairy, named Harry. And then we had my guinea pig, which had the spots, and then a pure like white one or blondy one that my younger brother had. Don't remember the two names, right? So we got the the the, the cute little beanie pigs. So sadly, one of, they kept dying, guys. First, my brother is my younger brother's guinea pig, the little white one. Got My friend was babysitting it and she accidentally let it out in the yard and it just disappeared. My guinea pig got terrified by huskies. Huskies gave my guinea pig a heart attack. And then the last guinea pig, little old Harry, he died of loneliness and in, and it's and now it's illegal to to have a single guinea pig by itself in Switzerland because of that. I know and that's why he died of loneliness. <sighs> and uh, mine died of a heart attack, okay? And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen sink on the planet. But the only thing more ironic than the fact that it's the complete oh! opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar opposite. Usually when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt any kind of pressure from predators. It's why the quokkas on Rottnest Island have no fear of humans since they have no natural predators. Oh! Capybara, on the other hand, have more- Is that why humans are fearless? Because we have no natural predators? Because we- 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 we create- the problem because <laughs> we caused the problems ops and a rapper with a rico charge these giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest big cat in north america a discount store brand crocodile and a paraplegic jurassic understudy their childhood isn't any easier because juveniles can get caught up with ocelots a paralysis huh? demon with wings and technically huh? pelicans don't count but it's not for a lack of trying uh -huh. and normally an animal that has to share an area could with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself for example if zebras had a stripe for everything with the ability to bury them they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them and we all know those tv static stallions ride that excuse like they get tax breaks from it <laughs> it just makes more sense for a prey animal to be more i mean it makes sense if you're prey you get violent you get violent violence to protect yourself willing to throw down predators get active to eat prey animals fight to live but what doesn't make sense is a capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories it's kind of like honey badgers and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum you got the four-legged assault oreo who doesn't value anyone's <gasps> life it its own. and then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically bothered enough to care and you would think this mentality the capybara just has no f's left they have no F's to give. The copy bar is over it. So over it.
they would have gotten the Cappy written out of the series of Life by Evolution. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo oh. dragon or the marsupial lion Thylaclio. That prehistoric PTSD means that even though kangaroos today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible capybaras had few natural predators coming up and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Believe they just don't care. They just don't care. Also, kangaroos are scary. I don't know how Australia is still alive. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised that we don't just hear stories constantly from Australia. They're just like, oh yeah, so many people just like died. <laughs> Cause you know. Hmm. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually small rodents that evolved from Africa about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot easier to hide, and number two, eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow to the size it is today. That and apparently oh. Capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non AP Whoa. biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that cappies were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature always- Oh, that's cool. They can be big and chubby without cancer catches up and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are and in a messed up uno reverse ah! becoming a literal mighty mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre-bulk so it's pretty much like cappies today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it like gen z it's also possible that capybaras are kind of like house hippos except that capybara is technically closer to a guinea pig but like a guinea pig that can swim the capybara isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, oh? and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most Ooh. food and female validation, which can lead to a lot of infighting in the cappy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always going to be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant <laughs> alpha male is more hyped than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too, mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nose diving into the nearest body of water, where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely- There's cappy drama! What? I thought they were just chill. There's so much animal drama, guys. It's like they should make animal soap opera. Not like bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't <laughs> explain why capybaras are so chill around animals, not even in the same species. Like take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued. Cheesecake? Oh, boop and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical Cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming through the sanctuary. She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them like her own blood. She would even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was- Oh my god, Cheesecake! So cute! It was basically a Mother Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted <gasps> in her time, but there's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat <laughs> right with me. Capybaras do this thing called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of like revolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for oh. going the left. He's going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP-sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's chances at actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. That's so interesting. That makes a lot of sense. One mother milk producing milk is not enough. Like just milk, letting everybody kind of like share the teat makes more sense. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother. She was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same sanctuary would end up getting another capybara <gasps> named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel like we should just take some time to appreciate that. Another thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole alloparenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt <gasps> orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's not the same as having a built-in oh. nursery system. Oh my god, that's so cute. Red squirrels are also very precious. In the group. 
So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboten Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker <laughs> said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. <laughs> and ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo hamsters to enjoy. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. You get it! Oh, can I just be in a hot bath with Izus and a little, and, and a little capybara? Oh, it'd be so cute! And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold, these videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. If your country is currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't- Yeah, Canada, let's bring the capybara hot tub parties here! Remember then, I think you found your problem. We don't need stimulus checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are <laughs> entire websites dedicated to finding the closest capybara in your area. So if I were to post a picture of me in a capybara with no context, this. This is the context. Capybaras are such an unlimited serotonin hack that naturally people are gonna ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they'd probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. A lot. They kind of have the panda problem, where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot back, so to compensate, they eat a whole lot more of it. Which means they seem to drop deuces at will. You might oh, not get to notice no. just how much- Oh they just so poopy! Because capybara also take part in coprophagia, which in NICE 2023 YouTube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you can handle watching this infinite food glitch in action, there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember- uh, they're like bunnies! They're like bunnies! They eat their own poop! We're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much as you. But you're not just feeding one cappy. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone, you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Cause two's company, but three's a party. And no self-respecting cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're gonna have to have 24 hour access to anything the capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water, so you might wanna rethink that. But the best reason why you might wanna hold off on adopting a walking coconut, it's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. <laughs> Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad at you. I know. Sadly, like as much as adopting a wild animal sounds just so amazing, it's just you... It's just a wild animal still. It's not a domesticated cat or dog. You realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming at you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids, because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina, because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Capi clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentinian gated community. They you just have to go to Argentina and you can see all the Capis. They quite literally pulled up. The upside? Free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. There are oh also reports of capybara running fades with pet dogs. Although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another bright side <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. The mm -hmm. biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat <gasps> and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far and if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm not gonna be mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated, rich community. Uh, Who would haunt a capybara? What the heck? 
There's a moral in there somewhere. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent uploads, be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But like, only do it if you can afford it, because honestly, you watching a video this far is actually more than I can really ask for. Got a whole lot of video ideas I wanna get out for the new year, so as always, drink water, hug your mother, dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing, try to be a cat <laughs> in a world full of cappers. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. I mean, I'm assuming they taste like guinea pig. <laughs> Look at them, they're crossing the street in such a nice fashion. In such a cute little huddle. They're causing a traffic jam. What a little menace. What a little menace. <laughs> what does that taste like? I don't know. I don't know what a guinea pig tastes like. <laughs>